Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10, brought to you by these sponsors. Welcome, everybody, to week six of First and 10, part two. Eric Johnson is alongside. If you missed Thursday night's edition, head to your website right after we're done here. At least five more games highlighted on there. Eric, tonight, the rocking chair game of the week. By all means, explain. Yeah, exactly. A tradition that started back in 1996 still lives 26 years later. James River playing Glimver for that famed rocking chair. It's lived at Highlander Heaven since 2014. The Knights, however, were trying to change that tonight. There it is in all its mm. glory being kept under the tent. Nice like and that. dry tonight. James River's defense making a statement early. Highlanders drive stuffed at the one. Big push from George Tolliver and Colin Cook. But then Glimver comes right back. Look at Elijah Carter busting off some big runs as he puts this ball into plus territory. Then Action Jackson, Jackson Camper, capped off the drive with a short touchdown run. 7 0 Highlanders lead. Second quarter, more damage on the ground. This time is Jackson Swanson. He plays chess while you're playing checkers. Oh, Check very nice. made 31 yes. yard touchdown run, 13 0 halftime lead. Defense stout in the second half. Highland is trying to drive, but Jonathan Austin okay. taking down that uh, player there for the tackle for a loss. But then they go right back to the mm. air. Picked off here by Glimbers. Deion Taylor that set up Mr. Swanson yet again. Remember, he plays chess when you play checkers. Dancing, dancing, dancing machine he was. Clips the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. 19-0 Glimber gets the win, and they retain their famed rocking chair. One of our kids, we did what we needed to do on a crappy night. Got it done, and, um, you know, they're tough. They're scrappy. They're 3-2 and two for a reason, and I'm sure they'll be in the playoffs, and hopefully we will be too. we got a long way to go, and... Um, our district is always tough. Our guys did a really good job just facing adversity with the weather and everything. Our defensive line played great. I mean, getting off blocks, making tackles, getting TFLs. I just kind of do my thing out there. I mean, I mean, all glory to God. And I I'm glad I got the ability to, to showcase my skills and be out there. Glimber did suffer a few injuries tonight, but they were able to get the all-important win and, of course, keep the rocking chair. They have some momentum now. They are winners of four straight as they prep for a trip to Floyd County next week. Thank you, Eric. The early River Ridge District lead hanging in the balance tonight as Christiansburg was hosting Salem. Now, there are other contenders, which we will get to in a moment. But first, this one, and you can't spell Christiansburg without Ian. And I'm pausing for the rain, the wind, the misery, and the chuckles. Tough conditions tonight. Scoreless first half, pick it up in the third quarter. Peyton Lewis converting on a second and eight, bouncing off several tacklers. It was literally a rock fight in a phone booth tonight. Meantime, Lewis finishing off the nine play drive, four yard run, six. Nothing Salem in the second half. Christiansburg with opportunities to tie. Late in the game, this is Tanner Evans. He's got an open receiver. Oh, not quite the connection they needed. We'll take it a fourth down in the last chance for the Demons. It's Cam Cooper going up top, and it was not their night. The Spartans have won five in a row. How about six to nothing tonight over Christiansburg? Hidden Valley at Pulaski tonight. We'll take a look at quarterback Joey Strong to Max Pardon. Titans first down, trying to move the sticks, but they couldn't sustain the drive. Back comes Pulaski. Tanner Mace has got some room, and he's coming down the sidelines right into our kitchen. Hidden Valley's quarterback Joey Strong coming back. But Alan Fernandez there for the sack, and then Trevor Burton shakes loose. He is free, and he is into the end zone. Hidden Valley up 13 to nothing on their way, or I should say trailing 13 to nothing. It's Pulaski County 41 to 7, your final over the Titans tonight. What about Patrick Henry? Well, they're three and one and certainly a contender in the River Ridge and taking on Blacksburg tonight. Joseph Beasley trying to find a receiver and Logan Pinnell right there greets him. That was kind of rough, but nonetheless, Jose Kimbrough up, up and away for the touchdown, 7 nothing. PH in this one. Few plays later, after a turnover, guess who? It's Kimbrough again. He's trotting into the zone. It's 14 to nothing PH. And we'll show you one more. And things just not going well for the Bruins here. We've got a botched punt attempt. Malachi Muse is on it. And they would, of course, cash in with Carmelo Taylor. PH 42 to 3. 
is your final. All right, oh, we're going to move on and tell you all about the Knights. They certainly have impressed early, 4-1 and one overall. But the entire Cave Spring community suffering a huge loss this week after the passing of an assistant coach, of course, a father and friend to so many. 10 Sports' Brook Leonard on hand at a soggy Dwight Bogle Stadium tonight. Tough task for the Knights to play this one, Brooke, and a tough task overall condition-wise. For sure. Everyone had the same issue tonight with that rain. It was uh, raining cats and dogs, literally. It did not let up. And, of course, when it's raining, it does not provide a lot of options on offense, and I think we saw a lot of that through the games tonight. First quarter, one of the few passes we did see – but Amarion Tolliver hits Alexander Dunn. The Ooh. ball pops out. It's an incomplete later. Bird up 7-0. Aiden Babich on the hunt. Sacks Israel Harrison. Second quarter, Harrison is going to find the end zone, taking it about 20 yards, and it's 14-0. Terriers, but the Knights' defense kept the hits coming. This one right here causing a turnover, but that drive fizzles out. Third quarter, here's one more from Harrison. Bird's offensive line opening up the run game tonight. Terriers get the big win, 35 nothing. Just proud of the whole team. You know, we, we take pride in our team, not, you know, depending on one guy. Um, we never know who it's going to be, depending on what game and what night it is. And tonight it really came down to the offensive line. And uh, we felt like we could run the ball. And uh, we ran the ball successfully tonight. And can't do that without a good O line. So those guys took care of business tonight. We're, we're, we're happy how our kids played. And we're fortunate to get out of here with a win. But, you know, it's, it's not about that tonight. It's, it's about a you know, community trying to heal and a football program that's trying to, to heal. So, um, again, our, our thoughts and prayers go to Case Spring. It was obviously a very emotional night. It's incredible that these kids even took the field. So, obviously, our thoughts and player, prayers from Channel 10 to the Cave Spring community. Obviously, and maybe the, maybe the lone positive through all this is everybody got together tonight. For sure. Even if it, the conditions were kind of rough for everybody involved. We'll move on to independent school action and North Cross gaining momentum as the top-ranked Division II school in the state hosting Blue Ridge out of St. George. And here we go, first quarter, Raiders up 9-0. It's Jarrell Rhodes hustling and muscling his way into the end zone at 16-0. Second quarter, here come the Barons in the red zone. Camden Brewer able to get this one in, little break fake, and he bootlegs it on in, 16-6. Little over a minute left in the half, Cam Johnson making a run for it, little pinball move. Setting up the Raiders for second and goal. Connor Lang is going to take the hit, cross the plane. That's a North Cross touchdown. They, of course, were leading 23-6 at the half. They go on to a 44-20 victory this afternoon. Two games tonight braving the rain other than the ones we showed you. How about Graham 27-7 over George Wythe and Page County over a traveling Bath County. That score was 44-25. to These four games slated for Monday before uh, we can move to week seven. We got to finish these. And I'll mention the GW game is actually a week five game that was rescheduled. You recall Patrick County at GW. They were trying to play that game. They had a power issue down there. They're going to try it again on Monday night. Still to come, the latest update on Tua after last night's brutal exit to the Bengals game. And we'll hear from Coach Pry on the Hokies' preparations to head to Carolina with the remnants of Ian still impacting the area. Area games we're keeping an eye on, including 3-1 and one Liberty at the Giant Killers. ODU at 6 p.m. UVA's got Duke down in the triad. That is a 7.30 start. We've got some news and notes for you including how about the Braves? They've come all the way back. They were like 10 down like a month ago. They've pulled even in the NL East with a 5-2 win over the Mets. Two more games in that series. And for fantasy football purposes, the Patriots are without their quarterback, Mac Jones. He's got a high ankle sprain. The Bears are without their running back, David Montgomery, versus the Giants. He's got a knee, an ankle, a shoulder, a hip, you, you name it. He's pretty banged up. Here comes your light of the night. Get a look at Harrison Bader. Look at him go and haul that one in out at the warning track. Beautiful catch. He robs Cedric Mullins right there on the deep drive to left center. That is going to do it for a Thursday, Friday doubleheader for week six. Twas a fine couple of shows indeed. We'll see you next week.